keys for the courier. No, I'm expecting a car. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I don't seem to be. <laughs> What's it? No. What's the like of Grandpa? Get up, please. What do you mean? Who are you? Get up. Turn around a minute. You don't want this, do you? Anyway, it isn't yours. How disgusting. There you are, Mary, darling. The lady is quite finished with it. Would you like some spit? No, thank you. Nothing I can do. Well, you can take those to the end of the pier. What, all of them? Oh, never mind. Don't trouble. <laughs> Paris, London, Paris, London, Paris, London. You've been to Paris? Yes. Doing what? Finishing school. Ah. Finished being finished? Yes. Good. Your penny, please. My what? Your penny landing fee. But I've landed. Oh, your penny, please. There's a gentleman there with my luggage. Very goodness. Oh, Will you please observe, I hate me hand to pitch in my pooch. What are you doing with these? Oh, wait, I'm Miss Victoria's driver. Oh, I see. No, that's mine. Here you are. Miss Victoria? I. Victoria? That's a grand neck. Oh, come on, please. Hi! Open in the name of the law. And no nonsense, do you hear? Looks like we'll have to affect an entry. I looks like we'll have to affect an entry. Look what you're doing, man. Will you confine your operations to the door? Stop it now! Would you be having me house a heap of ruins and me and Patsy in the midst of them? I'd patch you with Hector. Bring him out and let him come quiet. Hear nothing of the sort. Come quiet. <laughs> then I'll break the door, dude. Uh, just you try it. <laughs> One. Two, three. Hey. You're obstructing the law. It's the law's obstructing me. It'll all go again him. Oh, what's he done? And him as innocent as a newborn angel. You should have paid the license. License is it? If a grand big country like this is needing seven and six from the like of me, it's time it went on the door the same as the rest of us. Ah, man, dear, it's not the license money. It's the fine. Five pounds. I for persistent infringement. Well, where would the like of me get five pounds? Standing next to naked in the dead of summer with the wind whistling down from up the pole and me trying to sell ice cream for a bunch of frozen corpses. Ah! Patsy! Patsy! Get him, Donald. Come on, Come on, on. on Patsy. Got wheels, William. I have a given yes. Give me back me door. 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 Give Patsy, me lovely Patsy. Well, who are you? Oh, I'm Maggie. Where's Jessie? Oh, she left. You'll be Miss Victoria? Yes. I'm sorry, I can't help it. Oh, it's okay by me. That's a relief. Where's the provost? Oh, your dad's busy. And what's all this? A football match? It's politics. He's in the old Bailey calendar. I see. Well, go and unpack my things, will you? Okay. And don't say okay. What oh? Oh, and tell me, why did Jessie leave? Oh, she didn't approve. Citizens of Bakey, in full confidence of your loyalty, I, your provost, invite your presence at my inaugural meeting at the Town Hall Bakey on Friday next. Signed, William Girl. <laughs>
Good daddy, Calendar. Aye, uh, a bit personal. Oh, that's it, don't you see? Psychology. Oh, psychology. Loyalty. Ah, it's a fine word. They can't resist it. Hello, Vicky. My dear. Father. Oh, it's grand to see you again. <laughs> How are you, Billy? None, but you've turned into a great mother. Changed days since you fell into my pigsty. Yes, yes, don't bother about pigsties now. We've got to get to that council meeting. Talking of meetings, you might have met me at the pier. Oh, I I'm sorry about that, Vicky, but it was absolutely impossible. Your father's a busy man. There's great events for tending. I'm, uh, <clears throat> I'm standing for Parliament, Vicky. I know that. I've seen a few posters. But you don't know why I'm standing. You see, Vicky, these are exceptional times. And such times require exceptional measures. And exceptional men. Here, here. Uh, being provost of Bake is all very well in its way, but did you do this, Cullen? Yes. Well, I've done my best for the place, tried to keep it up to date. I've built them a new town hall, a new swimming pool, the most elaborate public conveniences, a curacao for the tourists. I hope you haven't spoiled Bake, your father. They said in the advertiser that I'm the best administrator in the country. Well, I'm sure you're a great success. Uh, I should be. I work hard enough. Tomorrow, I'm opening the Croy Cattle Show, and I have my big election meeting at night. And the day after, now this is strictly confidential, Vicky, Lord Scarivore is coming. Who's Lord Scarivore? Why, the leader of the party, of course. Oh, you'll note that he comes to see the Provost. The Provost doesn't go to see him. Well, he knows I have the Caledonia League behind me. <laughs> and it's not Vicky, or Scotland, but Scotsmen all over the Empire. Aye, it's a big thing, a grand big thing. There's no saying how big it may be. If I pull this off, the time may come when I shall be listened to by the whole world. The profession of journalism is an honorable one. What? The profession of journalism is honorable. Oh, oh yes, Father. I have nothing to be ashamed of in the conduct of my paper. What? I've nothing to be ashamed of. Oh, good. Nothing sensational ever enters my columns. Why not? I said... Uh, what? Sit down. Yes. Oh, no, not there. Over there. Oh, Mr. Burton, you've joined the most widely read paper on the West Coast. I suppose people have nothing else to do. Uh, uh, we have cigarettes, isn't there? No smoking in ours. Oh. Mr. Burden, a reporter on the advertiser is a position of very great trust. Now, I'm away to Manchester tonight, but unfortunately, my sub-editor's in bed. Oh, I'm sorry. What's the trouble? He's got lumbago. Oh. But the point is, I promised our provost a page in tomorrow's issue, and you will have to take the interview and see it through the press. Now, can you do that, Burden? No smoking. Oh, I've had Mrs. Yes, what's the, uh, what's the article about? Well, Provost Gow standing for the new party. Uh, what's new about it? For one thing, Scotland for the Scottish. Oh, does somebody else want it? That'll do, Burden. Mrs. Scarvin! Horace, we'll miss that train. Well, I'm waiting for you. Oh, Mr. Burden, my wife. How do you do? How do you do? Oh, well, you can't expect the Colonel's lady to notice a man's mate. I beg your pardon? Oh, well, uh, way over to the town hall. You're just about to get the provost. Yes, sir. Town hall, that ghastly direction opposite, isn't it? I'll have you know the provost built that. Oh. Oh, well, then I'll take another look at it. What a little brat. Uh, he's English, I think. Well, that's the way we are, Mr. Train. I'll look in on Willie and say goodbye. Oh, what for? With this lovely town hall. Is that all? Yes, Provost. Well, that'll do then. You'll be coming into the meeting soon. Bailey Callender's having a sore time in the chair. I'll be round in a minute. Now, clear up. Hey. Oh, Victoria, you'd better go off into the gallery to see the fan. Father, can I ask you something? Well, I'm, I'm rather busy. Why did you sack Jessie? Jessie, what? Oh, the parlour maid. Uh, she got a bit above herself, Vicky, and Lisbeth very kindly disposed of her for me. Lisbeth? Now, who's mentioning my name? 
Why, Victoria, I wouldn't have recognized you. How nice of you to look in and welcome me back. Yes. You've uh, quite grown up, dear. Well, Willie, I just looked in to say goodbye. Uh, that was good of you, Elizabeth. Uh, be back in time for the meeting. Oh, don't you worry. <laughs> I couldn't do without you on the platform. No, I don't think you could. <laughs> well, I must dash now, or Horace will have the jitters. How is Horace? Oh, just his old self. <laughs> Gentlemen, please, you're wasting time. The province has decided. Next business. Item number seven. The bathing drawers for the instructors at the new swimming pool. As chairman of the Cleansing and Parks Committee, I have looked into these drawers very carefully. And they certainly present some problems. Now, this is the sort of garment I would suggest. I... But, Mr. Deputy Chairman, the instructors complain that they're no practical. They cannot swim in them. So we're up against the old problem. Whether we select the unscutted and elongated or the scutted and abbreviated. In other words, either we decide upon an adequate drapery with limited mobility or desirable mobility with an inadequate drapery. Neither, in my opinion, are really satisfactory. We have to satisfy the... I move that the bathing drawers lie on the table. Sit down. Next business. Item number eight, supply of new hose for the fire brigade. Hello. Hello. What are you doing here? I'm just getting up to date. She won't get that way here. This is a very serious matter. Mr. Simon, that's got nothing to do with the question. I move that the whole matter be postponed for further investigation. But Mr. Provost... Will you kindly resume your seat? Next business. I hope the bearings are a broken name. Who? The headmaster. Mr. Don't bring that up again, please. You made a mistake. I don't think so. The trouble is, you don't think at all. <laughs> Next business. She's not very careful. She's put in a corner and given a thousand lines. I have an application from Ross, the stoker at the municipal laundry, asking for a rise at half a time a week. On what grounds? The same old grounds. His good ladies presented him with twins. In my view, if we count this application, we're only asking for a fourth pair of twins. Seven, right if he had four pairs of twins. But on second thoughts, thank the Lord he hasn't. Gentlemen, we have something more important to discuss than Mr. Ross's weekly milk bill. We'll hand the matter to the Ways and Means Committee. Uh, we will now discuss my scheme for publicizing Bakey throughout the country as a tourist resort. You have copies of the detailed memorandum I've drawn up. <coughs> and, uh, I'll assume that you've all taken the trouble to read it. Fellow gives me a pain in the neck. Oh, dear. Honoria. McKellar, where in heaven's name have you been? You can't come here. No, no, I can't do anything else. I can't sit here with my two hands folded in front of me like patients on a document. But they're about to adjourn. The provost will be coming. It's himself I'm after. Oh, he won't see you, Honoria. He won't avoid us. Well, there was one important item that was new on the agenda. We are wanting your authorization for the purchase of new nasturtium plants for the orphanage. Well, what happened to the old ones? Oh, why, the orphans ate the seeds. Oh, they did, did they? Aye. I'll look into that, Mr. Thompson. Thank you, Mr. One Provost. One moment, Mr. Provost, Your Honor. Uh, you know all about me. Seems I know all about you. It is myself, Honoria Hegarty. Yes, Not a word now. I know what you're going to say. Don't say it. It's all very fine and large, and it's the law, don't I know? And I know you can't make exceptions. They tell me all that at the office. And I know it's all in the book of words. But it's what I'm telling you, it is all nonsense. Will you kindly stop talking and get out of my way? Listen, Honoria. And what more should I be listening? Sir. And him to talk to well, you What do you want? Problems. Nothing. I was told I had to interview you. Oh, you're from the advertiser. Do you mind coming home with me? Not at all. I'll wait till you return to this lady. Your Honor, it's not myself I'm thinking of. It's Patsy. My little Patsy. He's the heart and soul out of me body, and I'm telling you no lie. If he goes, I go too. Up to heaven among the blessed saints. And it'll be all your fault. If you annoy me any further, I'll have you locked up. Come along, Mr. Um, Burden. But are you coming? Sure. Get in. Go on, man. Mm. Oh, move up. Mm. Oh, this is my daughter, Victoria. Move up. How do you do? How do you do? 
If you knew my Patsy, you wouldn't have a grin the like of that from east to west all over your face. Oh, God, I know him all right. What's that? You know him? Well, in a manner of speaking, he's lodging here with me. You're calling me. Look in the chest, Honoria. Patsy, me darling boy, the light of his mother's eyes. Oh, me, me beautiful Patsy, me lovely Patsy. And what in the name of the holy apostrophe is he doing here in your unclean apartment in a wooden box? But can I have him at the police station? You see, it's this way. The police sergeant's bull terrier bitch. She... Well, what is it, man? Speak out. For heaven's sake. <laughs> <laughs> and seeing I'm the borough officer, I've given him the custody. Isn't he the fine little fella? Oh, oh he is that, Honoria. He eats like a week old. He loves his bread and milk for breakfast. Oh, I made him a nice bowl of rice. Ah, he's treating you all right, darling. <laughs> well, uh, I feel kind of funny with the wee brute. He makes a sort of condemned cell atmosphere about my lodgings. What's that? They're not going to. You don't mean... Aye. They can't, they can't! Come along, come along. Okay. Sit down. Oh, thank you. No, no, not there, not there, not there. No. I hear you're turning politician, Mr. Gow. Politician? Ah, statesman. Father wants to be Prime Minister of the first Scotch Parliament. Scottish, Vicky, Scottish. Help yourself to a Scottish and soda. I'll leave you to it. Hi, what's your name? You there? What? Oh, just a second, Mr. Gow. Oh. There's no call to be jumping about like a French poodle in this house. Sit down. Stagnation of public life. What was that? I'm dictating. Oh, I'm so sorry. Don't I take notes and then write it up for you? Write it up? Yeah, you um, put it into English. You'll kindly put down exactly what I say. I'm away to the cattle show early in the morning and I want a proof of the interview tonight. Yes, very good. Stagnation of public life. Wanted new men. Thomas Gow's plain words to the electors. During my term of office, as Provost of Bakey, I have been instrumental in bringing about great changes in the borough. But oh, oh. there is one change that I shall never make. A change in the principles which guide me. No, no, of course not. Oh, you better come in here. The man's just busy. But I know that. He's busy right wrongs. Well, here's another for him. I advise you to scram. All right, Maggie. Oh, God bless you, ma'am. May the devil look past you and look straight into your eyes. Oh, ma'am, dear, it's his honor I'm seeking. I'm afraid he's giving an interview. Oh, the poor soul. And I am deeply concerned with the well-being of every individual in the community. But, ma'am, it can't wait. It's a matter of life and death. It's about my little Patsy. Why, what's the little boy done? Oh, Your Honor, it's about my Patsy. How dare you burst in here? Father. Burst or not, I've got to do what I've got to do. I'll do it somewhere else. I think some little boy of hers has gotten to a scrape. I warned you at the town hall. But you said it's very urgent. And now you have the insolence to come cantering into my private house. I think if we got the little chap here and talked to him... If you talk to him, ma'am, he'd bark at you. Bark at us? Victoria, are you mad? Show her out of here at once. And understand, Mrs. Hegarty, the case of your dog is finished once and for all. Dog? But you told me it was about your little son. No, I asked you, did I ever tell you anything of the kind? Not but what he's like a son to me. And now... Now they're going to kill him. <laughs> but rubbish. Who's going to kill a little dog? The corporation and the polis and the provost. Father! Father, is this true about Mrs. Hegarty's little dog? She's persistently defied the law in the matter of the dog tax. But, Father... She's been warned time and time again. But if it's only seven and sixpence... She's been fined and she won't pay that. But if it's only seven and sixpence, surely... The court passed judgment and quite rightly. The town is full of dirty little mongrel dogs. The state of the pavement... How much does she owe? Five pounds in the tax. Well, surely they can make an exception. No, no, no. Of a playboy. Mais non, mais non. Quoi pas? Il s'agit d'un principal. Jamais d'un principe, toujours d'un homme. Here, here. If you are so keen on dogs, save up and get a new one. A new dog. A new dog. The next time, pay the tax. Vicky, put her out. Uh, what was I saying before that unconscionable interview? You were concerned with the well-being of every individual in the community. Ah. 
I am asking my friends in Dickey to give me an opportunity of applying these principles. I subscribe. What? Unless you want to settle on the quiet, of course. Do you mean for that woman? I wouldn't pay a penny on principle. Wouldn't it be advisable? Especially when you're asking people to vote for you. Thank you very much. Will you kindly mind your own business? I am asking my friends in Vicky to give me an opportunity of applying these principles. My Lord. Oh. Oh, 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 Get inside. Now, uh, where was I? Applying these principles. Ah, yes, in a wider field. It is the realization that each unit in the state is a living, breathing soul. Will you get on? Living, breathing soul. Each with his own intense perception of his own rights and his own wrongs. A leader must have that strange sixth sense which enables him to see into the hearts of his people. The prophet says you have to mind the corrections, Burden. Mr. Burden. Talk away. Talk away yourself, to bed. Go on. <laughs> Gonna keep the machines waiting all night. Probably. Here, yeah, no smoking within hours. Here, yeah, have one. Aye. Oatmeal. The food of horses in England and men in Scotland. And where, sir, can you find such horses or such men? Mister. Sir, to you. Can you have some porridge? Ach, away. Did you write that? <clears throat> Listen, I've took a kind of liking to you, and I'm telling you, seeing you're new at the game, and I'm an old hand. Do you like this? British bacteria and what they do. You're daft. I beg your pardon? Nuts the court in English. You keep the dirty mitts off my breakfast. You're for it. I smile. You'll no stand there with a smile on your face like a split melon when the boss and the gaffer gets after you. You're done for. You don't see, done for. Where's the golf course? Oh, it's you. It's quite all right. You're a little bit late with your four. Well, you were a bit early with your uh, aft. Oh, uh, Donald, please. Well, anyway, why aren't you working? Donald and I are taking the morning off. Would you care to join us? Yes, I'd love to. Yeah, I'm afraid I've lost my ball. Yes, you do seem to be lying pretty badly. Not lying too well yourself. <laughs> well, well, let's put two more down. Yes. Come on, Donald, bring the club. You show me the way. Right. Hand me your mashie. And the ball. Your game was bad enough when you were by yourself. What will it be now? <laughs> Sorry about that business of Mrs. Hegarty's dog. <laughs> yes. Still, something ought to be done about it. <laughs> yes. Oh, Sally, I'm trying to play. Oh, that's quite all right. Did the Provost go to cry this morning? Yes, early. Why? Oh, nothing. Mr. Hegarty! Mr. Hegarty! You're in the papers! What? There's a whole page about you in the advertiser. Uh, not me. In the advertiser. 
Tom McWhorton, have you a copy of this illustrious publication? No, me. Don McKenna saw it in the library when he was doing his crossword. In the library? Tom McWhorton, keep me ice cream warm. O'Connell and Kathleen Houlihan. If that isn't my name all over the page, in letters the size of a great whale itself that swims in the wide ocean. Scandalous incident over a dog. Will you listen to this now? Yeah. It's high time our local bumbles learn to administer the law with decency. That's the bumbles at all. Oh, it's beneath the prophet's dignity to set a mind at rest. It wasn't beneath his dignity to kick her out of doors. No. He took his boot to her and her a complete stranger. Yes. Oh. That doesn't that not awful? Oh. Tonight this dull bully is holding a political meeting to make a grand parade of his principles. They're not good enough for us, and neither is he. Silence! Silence in this room. Congratulations. A magnificent fellow. If we could only apply the knowledge and energy that has gone to the breeding of that animal, to the improvement of the human stock, we could have something like that in three generations. for the game. We'll have another when you've the time. Yes, I think I'll have the time. Victoria! What are you doing here with that man? You know, Mr. Burden. Yeah, I'm one of the untouchables. I'll say you are. Haven't you heard? Something terrible has happened. Horace is off his head. Oh, no, Lisbeth. Have you had the doctor? Oh, don't be silly. Drive me home and I'll tell you. And Horace will deal with you, you cad. Well, what on earth? Oh, get on, Vicky. What on earth Willie will be saying? Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, these are exceptional times. And they require exceptional... Uh, they require exceptional... exceptional measures. And exceptional men. <laughs> Pause for applause. Ah, my friends. Were you speaking? I was not. It must have been the differential. see the provost. Well, he's not back. He'll go straight to the hall. Oh, I just want to give him an explanation. I suppose you mean an apology. No, an explanation. Oh, I'd better go. It can't be very pleasant for you to see me. I suppose you know what you've done. You've slandered a fine honorable man. It's despicable. What harm has my father ever done to you? To me? No harm. Then why do you stab him in the back like this? Why did you do it? Hard to explain. No decent action is ever hard to explain. Oh, perhaps not. You don't mean that idiotic business about that dog. You think it's idiotic? Well, it's so, so small. Pressure is never small. Well, no, of course, but it doesn't make sense. You lose your job, you'll never get another one, and all because you got sentimental about a silly old woman and her mongrel dog. So did you. You stuck up for her. Well, I tried to clear up after the provost had asserted his authority. That's what women are for. Oh, that's what women are for, are they? Why did you do it? Don't 
Don't be such a mule. I'm trying to help you. Are you? Are you? Why? Oh, well, never mind why. What sort of man are you, anyhow? Well, did you ever know a decent sort of chap who could tell you straight off what sort of decent chap he was? I never knew a man do the mischief you've done for no reason at all. Well, look here. If you really want to know, I'll tell you something I never told. No, I won't. Goodbye. Tell me. Well, when I was a kid, I lived at the foot of a steep hill. Carts used to go up the hill with heavy loads. Sometimes the horses couldn't take the loads and the carters used to hit them. On their flanks, on their bellies, on their eyes and nostrils. But one day I couldn't stick it any longer. I was terrified out of my life. I went to one of the carters. He just put the flat of his hand against my face and sent me spinning into the gutter. So I said to myself, when you grow up, you will hit out. Every time, no matter what it costs. And you've done that? Yes. Get in. Mon, has the advertiser gone mad? I was away. It was a great shock to me. But what are we to do? Does the provost know? I couldn't say. My, but it's awful, awful. Oh, Horace, I want to talk to you. Willie's not here yet. He won't think I had anything to do with it. Oh, don't be stupid. Oh, I wonder if he's seen it. Well, if he hasn't, we daren't tell him now, not before his speech. Here he is. Come on! Come on! Hello, Hello Richard. Hello, Barton. That was a good job you made of my interview. You made the corrections in the proof? Yes. Hello, Richard. Hello, Calendar. A great night, eh? Hello, Horace. You hear that? So they are calling for their Willie. Well, they shall have their Willie. Two of them take us forward. I'm going to come there, Willie. Tonight needs very little introduction from me. There is no one done more for Beaky than Provost Gar. Yeah. Tonight, I want you to show him what you really think of him in your hearts. Has Robbie Byrne so wisely said, Oh, what some power the gift to give us. To see ourselves as others see us. Yes. Now you give the Provost the power to see himself as you see him tonight. Provost God. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I think I may call you my friend. I'm sure I may call you my friend. For what is friendship but the will to do and the power to do the best a man can for those with whom he is associated? It is a sacred bond 
A beautiful relationship. What's the matter with him, Scurvy? A secret bond, a beautiful relationship. We live, my friends, in exceptional times. And such times require exceptional measures. Ah, my friends. <laughs> What is needed today is a firm hand at the helm. A man who will go on and on and up and up. <laughs> on and on and up and up. Always keeping before him the best interests of the whole community. <laughs> it will be the duty of such a man to protect the oppressed. <laughs> He does not hold out a helping hand. of this. Oh, uh, well, I never saw the like in 40 years of Scotch politics. Scottish, man, Scottish. Who wrote this filth? I'm afraid I did. You did? Yes, he did. You treacherous little sneak, you dirty rat. Oh, Father, don't. What's the use? Uh, you keep out of this. Listen, Mr. Gow. You stumbling little thug. You see, Victoria, it's no use. Don't you dare to address my daughter. Well, you won't listen to me. Listen to you, you putrid little hack writer. Shut up. What did you say? I said shut up. Oh, Father, do stop. Victoria, I think you're the limit. Go on, Willie. Give the little bounder the hiding he deserves. Yes, by gad. I tell you what I'll do to you, you... Be careful, damn you. I'm rather good at this. Mr. Provost. Oh, Mr. Provost. The sergeant says, will you leave the building? Now, what do you mean? Of course I'll leave the building. Aye, but the sergeant says, will you go out for the back way? The back way? What for? The rowdies are getting out of hand. Time to break in. I'll show the rebel what I think of them. Willie, what are you going to do? I'll show them who's Provost. Gow, oh, I can't carry on like a lot of hooligans in my town. Provost. Father, don't you get hurt. I'll deal with you in the morning. And that goes to me. But the sergeant said... Oh, shut up. Provost. You want to spare us this anyway? Open the door. But you can't show yourself who's there, Mr. Gow. No, you can't show yourself who's there. Open that door.
over. Father, about last night... If there's one thing that I can't tolerate, it's disloyalty. Not content with paying golf for the fellow. Who told you about that? Elizabeth, I suppose. Well, she does know what loyalty is. Well, after all, it was before I knew about the article. It was after you knew that you brought him onto the platform. Well, how was I to know that people were going to jeer at you? Now, uh, don't exaggerate, Vicky, please. And it wasn't the people. It was a put-up job organized by that unprincipled little skunk. <clears throat> More coffee, please. Mr. Burden had nothing to do with it. Oh, he hadn't. He had nothing to do with the article, I suppose. I know, I know. But I discussed the whole thing with you him. You discussed it with him? Yes. This morning he writes to say that... Oh, he writes. <laughs> How nice. Well, anyway, if you'd done the right thing, you would have paid the fine yourself. It's all rather trivial. Trivial? Look at this. In the Scottish edition of a London newspaper. Good heavens. <coughs> Willie, have you seen this? Scottish candidate barked down. Do they think that's funny? What's going to happen at the dinner tonight? Lord Skeddivore, the party. Something's got to be done and done quickly. Morris is taking Burden round to your office. Good, I'll break that fellow. You'd better be careful. I don't think you know, Mr. Burden. Now, Mr. Burden, I'm going to ask you a few questions. And I'll advise you to stick to the truth. Where are we, Berlin, Moscow, or where? You'll find out where you are. Soon enough. Oh, I'm Nordic, if that's what's worrying you. That's enough. I'll do. Be quiet, you little cad. Come on now. How much did they pay you? Or was it a fat job? It's blackmail. What are you talking about? You needn't act the innocent. We know who is backing you, Burden. Come on, speak up, man. What exactly was it worth to you? Oh, no, you don't. We haven't finished with you yet, not by a long talk. The opposition paid you to get that muck into the advertiser. And you were at the back of the row, too. And the plot unmasked, eh? So you don't deny it? I wouldn't spoil your fun. It'll be no fun for you. You're going to sweat for this. I came here out of my own free will to try and help you out of your mess, though heaven knows why I should. But after your childish insinuation... Wait! Now, this is a withdrawal of the statements you made in your article. And you're going to sign it. I'll read it to you. I, the undersigned... You needn't trouble. No, no, of course not. It's quite in order. Just sign at the bottom. Are you being serious? What do you mean? No. What do you mean, no? I mean, I won't sign it or anything else. You won't sign it? No, I darn well won't. You mean you refuse? That is what I'm trying to convey. But why not? Because every word that I wrote was true. Do you know what they set you in for? No, I don't care. You can consider yourself sacked. I considered myself that yesterday. You won't find another job. We'll see to that. And I'm sure you will. I suppose you know this means an action for, um, for, um... Slander. Aye, slander. And not only civil action, sir, but criminal proceedings. And ten years penal servitude and twenty strokes of the cat three times a day after food. I don't care. Mr. Gow, you're not a bad chap at heart, but you've got to remember one thing. The people of this country are the most long-suffering on God's earth. They'll put up with humbug, hypocrisy, shilly-shallying and hardship. They'll pull in their belts if they think it's their duty. They'll go to the four corners of the earth and get blown to bits if needs be. But two things they will not stand. Bullying and cruelty. And if you've forgotten that, I'll make it my business to remind you. I told you to be careful. And what's more, I think he's quite right. Oh. You are having fun. Blowing off steam? Yes. You're absolutely furious? Yes. But you haven't the vaguest idea what to do about it. Breaking China, isn't it? I wish it was his neck. Father? Yes. Aren't you being a little childish? Allow me. 
Thank you. I suppose your pride's hurt at anyone daring to suspect your motives. You must admit it's a bit hard for any ordinary person not to think you were bribed. Don't break this one. Allow me. Thank you. You've got yourself into a nice mess, haven't you? I've won something. Never mind that. What are you going to do? Look for another job, I suppose. If you can get one. And what are you going to do in the meanwhile? You got any money at all? See that? No, thanks. You may need them. Frank. Don't get excited. I want to ask you a question. Yes, but you, 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 you call me Frank. Well? But that, that's my name. So I thought. Yes, but it's the first time you've used my name. Well, what about it? it, it, it it's the first time you've called me Frank. Oh, do listen. Yes, well, uh, Leonard's not a penny. Oh. There. It's difficult to ask you this, and you mustn't misunderstand me. Do what Father asks. What on earth do you take me for? Eleven stone, six pounds, four ounces. Oh, don't be so obstinate. How can you expect me to knuckle under to him? You know I'm right, you said so. I never said you were. I said your motives were. Now, don't ask for another one. Frank, you've made your protest and it was a fine thing to do. That's pig-headedness. And there's nothing new about pig-headedness. It's as old as the pigs. So is this. Be generous. Generous? You dealt father a pretty hard knock, you know. You made him ridiculous, which was the worst thing you could do. Why not call it a day? What about Patsy? Well, put it this way. If he behaves decently to Mrs. Hegarty, you'll sign the withdrawal. Supposing he won't? He will. He may break his word. Then we'll both tell the world what we think of him. Both? Then you're in this with me. Deal. It's what I'm telling you. It's time for me facing the dust they are when it was rising to the stars. Oh. With the people buzzing around like there was bees around the honeysuckle, and me selling ice creams as if they were hot dogs. Oh. Give me my shawl. I'm making enough money to pay me fine and get Patsy back so I can. Oh, oh, Mr. Burden, Your Honor. They're after arresting me goods and chattels. What's happening, McKellar? We're seizing our goods for debt. Well, who are? The authorities. Oh, this is fantastic. Oh, it is that. And they're doing in the wee dog tonight. Oh. Oh. We're from the London Sun. Are you a reporter? Yes. Come with me. I'll give you the biggest scoop you ever had in your life. You better come, Mrs. Hegarty, too, and I... Mr. Burden, Your Honor, don't be doing any more good for me. I've lost Patsy, I've lost me Bella. There's a little much more I can lose. Get out of me way. Get after her, quick. If your father thinks he's going to get away with this, he's made the biggest mistake of his life. Don't you wag that thing at me. The deal's off. The condemned man ate a hearty meal. Hello, oh, dear. It's myself. I've come to say goodbye. You, you didn't say that you were leaving us. It's goodbye to Patsy Yamadon. Well, step on it. Well, we're coming for him. Take on, Honorian, it cannot be helped. There he lies, as if he was in his coffin. 
I'm real sorry, Honoria, but you can how half the ills we do in this world are the bidding of other folk. That's the truth. Aye. What do you say to a wee drink? Come on, they're open. No, no, Honoria. In return for your kindness. I'll leave Patsy. Ah, he'll be all right. You can lock the door. Nobody will know. We'll drink to his dear departing spirit. Sure. Sure, it's only common humanity. Well, I'll get my keys. Only a wee in mind. Mind the scenario. The lethal chambers you mean. Just that. You mean. I'm seeking you, McKenna. Oh, it's you. Aye, all six of me. I suppose you know you're keeping the vet waiting. Aye, uh, you're keeping the vet waiting. Whisht, whisht. Have a heart, have a heart. Do not cause unnecessary pain. Ah, away with you. Come on round to your lodging and hand him over. All right, Your Honor. Okay. Your good health, my dear. Thank you, Lord Carrivo. Of course. Uh, we must all drink to that. Uh, Highland honors, Mr. Provost. Uh, Aye. Slange. Slange. <laughs> you still weren't made it? Very nice time. Very good indeed. Very nice. I think they've all enjoyed themselves. Allow me. I don't be too long with the port, Lord Carrivon. No, I won't. <clears throat> ah, my lord. Uh, bring the cigars, Hollis, will you? Uh, come over here, my lord. Come over here and uh, finish your port in comfort, will you? Uh, thank you. Right. Come, my lord. Yeah. Thank you. Cigar. Thank you, Hollis. Well, go. About your adoption as official candidate. I, I thought that was settled. Yeah, I'd hoped it was, but uh, tell me, what's all this about a dog? I, I don't understand. Mm, I mean this... Uh, you know, at a by-election, the first to be fought by our party. It's, um, well, what's it all about? I've heard things. You know, it'd be awkward if... Oh, you mean, uh, oh, that? <laughs> oh, that was just a storm in a teacup. <laughs> a woman refused to pay her dog license and some young lads made a sort of joke about it. Exuberance of youth, you know? It wasn't an organized thing. Oh, no, 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 no. Papers made out there was a bit of a riot. Riot? <laughs> that wasn't a riot, was it, Harry? Oh, oh no, 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 no. Just, uh, just fun and games. <laughs> Might I have a drop of whiskey instead of this pot? <laughs> Why, of course, my lord. Please do, my lord. Please, uh, help yourself, won't you? Thank you. I understand you're very highly respected in this neighborhood, Mr. Go. There's no man more respected than the provost. If you understand me, his word is law. Uh. Now, in the development of Beaky, he... Huh. Popular, too? Extremely popular. Extremely popular. Well, you know, popularity's a tender plant. The tactless handling of a situation might be the end of us. But I've told your lordship the whole childish affair is finished and done with. Devil is that row. <laughs> What's the meaning of this tomfoolery? Oh, really, my lord, I... Please. 
Thank you. Thank you. What's all this? What's that the tumbler of her doing here? Mr. Promised! Mr. Promised! Oh, Mr. Promised! He's gone! He's gone! Who's gone? Patsy, Mr. Provost. And who is Patsy? Oh, my, my Mrs. Haggerty's lord, you dogship. Home in a teacup, eh? Exuberance of youth, eh? Popular, eh? Call my car. That's just what you don't. None of you understand, Willie. Elizabeth. And you're worse than any of them. You've worked against your own father, carrying on with that rotten little bounder. Elizabeth, control yourself. And you're just as bad. You're jealous of him because he's a man. And you're just a miserable fish. Oh, Elizabeth, dear, you're a thing. Get away, don't touch me. Oh, Willie, my darling, my love, they can't do this to you. <laughs> here, here, here. What does that mean? It means... But I'm not wanted in this house. There's yours. Do you think I'm doing this for money? Take it away. Oh, I want a couple of quid to live on. Don't be an ass. Why should the son get all this for nothing? Here, take it away. Give it to anyone you like. Give it to the Royal Ophthalmic Hospital for my opic peak and eat. Give it to Mrs. Hegarty. 
You're the Procurator Fiscal, you're the Public Prosecutor, aren't you? Yes, but I don't see... You're a duty man. You've got the prosecutor. Yes, but on what charge? Well, find a charge. That's your job. Mr. Button? What the... I have a warrant for your arrest. I must ask you to come with me. What for? Here, yeah, you can't do that. What's the charge? Let's see the warrant. Come quietly now. This is Mr. Watkins of the FFFFF Federation of Friends of the Feathered Four-Footed and Fur, you know. God. Mr. Burden, my society is filled with admiration for your great work on this Patsy case. But we feel that you've fought a lone, unequal battle too long. I am authorized to inform you that my Federation has decided to take up the case officially and to finance your defense. Mr. Burden, we couldn't do otherwise. The enthusiasm of our members. We've made Patsy an honorary vice president. We've also just... Oh, 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 Go away. I'm fed up with the whole business. If I want to become publicity stunt raising funds for your federation of futile fatheads, I'll let you know. You have made a national entertainment out of what was a perfectly honest, straightforward issue. And you want to use it to boost your full society. Well, I won't have it. I don't care if I win the case or lose it. I've lost everything over this. I've lost my job, I've lost my future, I've lost... Oh, take them away. Mr. Burton, you can't behave like this, and you can't say things like that. My society is going to defend you, whether you like it or not. Come along, sir. It's downright incontinental, so it is. To see you gazing there at nothing, as if you were Columbus taking his first look at America and the dear heart of you broken at the sight of it. Come on, man, dear. Don't be refusing the help of others when the sorrow's on you. And stand up for yourself to his honor, the sheriff. The way you stand up for others, the widow and the orphan, the poor and the needless. Listen. I've caused enough trouble. I'm through. I don't care what they do, I don't want to win the case. I don't want to do anything more to hurt Miss Victoria. Now, that's the great boy you are, Mr. Burden. And it's the great gift for writing you have. Did I tell you, I had the article framed. It's up on the wall between His Holiness and the colored enlargement of poor Hegarty that was. <laughs> Shame, that's what it is. Fear makes me boil over. Such a sweet little doggy, my dear. Yes, I know what I'd do with that promise of Bakey. Doing a thing like that to a dog. Bad show. <laughs> Hardly playing the game, what? It's not cricket. No. Patsy case. It is understood that reports of the resignation of Provost William Gow were officially denied in Bakey today. <laughs> Frank Burden. Bring up Frank Burden. I brought myself up. I might have given me some red fire and a chord in the orchestra. 
This is a court of law. There is no orchestra, whatever. Then there should be. You be quiet. Inasmuch as you did not to publish a statement designed or calculated to exercise an improper influence on the voters in the parliamentary election under the Corrupt and Illegal Practices Act of 1895. When? 1895. But I wasn't born then. Have you understood the charge? I'll try to. Do you want it read again? Uh, no, thank you. Well, do you plead guilty or not guilty? Does it matter? The prisoner pleads not guilty, my lord. Uh, you know best. Uh, we may proceed. Why not? Thank you. <coughs> Call Robert Andrews. Robert Andrews. Robert Andrews. Robert Andrews. Do brisk up, Willie. Oh, I wish I could see Victoria. Oh, her, she won't turn up anyway. Willie, when you've won your case, Horace may call off the divorce. Sometimes I think you're without one moral principle. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. You're Robert Andrews. I am. You're a compositor working for the Bakey Advertiser. I am. And that is, you set up in print the matter appearing in the paper. I do. Now, on the night in question, were you given by the panel a last-minute article to set up? I was. And was the panel the author of the article? I was. Silence! How dare you? I'm trying to save time, but I defend the case. I expect my client to behave himself. I didn't ask you to. I wanted to defend myself. Mr. Burton, there are 3,000 pounds put forward for your defense by the F, 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 F. We all know where that's going to. Really? Yeah. Leave him to me, Mr. Mingis. Mr. Burden, you must not interrupt the hearing. Go on. How did you know the panel was the author of the article? It was his English hand of writing. Oh, what do you mean by that? Illiterate, you'll understand. <laughs> <laughs> I understand you had difficulty in deciphering the article. It was practically a physical impossibility. You're quite sure you set in print what the panel wrote? Of course he did. Keep quiet. I corrected the proof myself. For heaven's sake, hold your tongue. Well, don't suggest I didn't write what I did write. Shh. You really must speak to your client, Mr. Mingis. The Lord, you told me to leave him to you. Don't be impertinent. <laughs> Silence! The next person to laugh will be turned out of this court. <laughs> yes. Vicky! Why? I thought you weren't coming. Why else could I do? I've missed you, Vicky. It was decent of you to have kept away from him. You were mistaken in him, Vicky. He's just a self-seeking little rotter. He's nothing of the kind. He didn't do anything you didn't goad him to. And you're bringing this case simply to satisfy your own pride. I see. So you're still taken in with the fellow. Well, it'll interest you to know that I've got him this time. Father. You are Margaret Twine? Sure. Just answer yes or no. OK. You're employed as a parlour maid by Provost Gull. Says you. Uh, what is the meaning of this expression, uh, says you? Well, uh, my lord, it's a slang phrase of American origin which has gained regrettable currency in the language of our people through the insidious agency of the cinema. And it is, I'm given to understand, employed to indicate a state of dubiety in the mind of the speaker as to the veracity or credibility of a statement made. Oh, yeah? Waiting. Where on earth have you been? Sure, I had to take my pasty out of the nursing home. The publicity got on the nerves of him, and he's had to have a rest cure. You're lucky not to get six months for contempt of court. Well, I don't know about the six months, but I've got the contempt all right. That I will tell the truth. Tell the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. Nothing but the truth. Thank you. Thank you. Your name, I believe, is Honoria Gaker. Or Hegarty. I make up your mind, man, which it is. Hegarty it is. Yes. Now, on the evening under discussion, you paid a visit to Mr. Gow's house. 
Clyde View, McCullum Road. I did it all. <laughs> You've cause to remember that evening. Cause is it? And the foot of me back hitting every step. And I was a great large bruise, the colour of a rainbow in the sky. It's not faded away yet. Look, if you could only see it. Yes, well, never mind about that. Oh, it's easy for you to talk. Couldn't I get in, please? Was you involved in the case? Yes, but I... Nay, nay, I'll hate to wait till I bore you out. And now we come to the evening of the, uh, the canine demonstration at Mr. Gow's house. Now tell me, on that day, did the accused express animus against the provost? Sure, all the animals in the length and breadth of the land is against the provost. No, thank you, that'll do. Mr. Mees, do you wish to question the witness? Certainly not, my lord. Indeed, I've been waiting with all the patience I can muster to hear why the Crown has called this rather irrelevant lady. Oh, Patsy! Did you hear what he called me? Yes, you must stand down. God bless your honour and her ladyship. If so be, there's such a lucky woman as to be wed to your holiness. Michael Cassidy. From his rub to his shoulders, he's a taste of the sheepdog, but he's got the muzzle of a setter and the ears of a cocker spaniel. And he's a wise look on him like an Irish terrier. And he's a soldier-like tail like a Pomeranian. And he's got the sad, noble eyes of a poodle. In fact, He's not so much dog as an epitome of all the dogs that ever ran round this world on four legs. Yes, but what's he worth? Six and eightpence. My lord, what has this to do with the case? I'm establishing motive by a process of elimination. Must you eliminate the entire population of the British Islands and the Irish Free State? My lord, I object to this witness. I don't. What did you say? I said I had no objection. Are you going to keep quiet? Fairly, not altogether. I'll abandon the case. Good. Really? My lord! Now, now, Mr. Burden, you mustn't speak like that, you know. I realize you're a very young man, and indeed I sometimes fail to fathom the younger generation. They seem to have no balance, no stability. What with swing music, automatic gambling machines, and the encouragement given to idleness and loose living by the British Broadcasting Corporation. What are you laughing at, Mr. Mingies? Was I laughing, my lord? You made a sort of gesture with your features that I've always taken as an expression of amusement. I'm unaware of anything amusing in what I am saying. I hardly fancied you were, my lord. Then perhaps you'll refrain from cackinating until you find yourself in a more suitable place for that exercise. With all respect, your lordship misapprehended the exact nature of the gesture to which your lordship was pleased to refer. As a matter of fact, I... I was stifling a very insistent yawn. Indeed, Mr. Mingies? Perhaps your lordship will now revise your pronouncement as to the suitable place for that exercise. If you wish me, Mr. Mingies, to recount the uses for which this place is suitable, I'm quite prepared to do so. For one thing, it is suitable for the exercise of your undoubted talents as defending counsel. Talents which I may remark I've not observed to be conspicuously employed on this particular case. And not. Your Lordship's opinion of my poor capabilities, expressed, if I may say in all sincerity, with a terseness and clarity that are a credit to the Scottish Bar, has left me with no alternative but to withdraw from the case. I have been grossly insulted. Good morning. Let me some mingle. Silent. And now, my Lord, may I defend Silent. myself? Well, I can't stop you. You may leave the duck to consult your solicitor. The good name of the F. Don't spit at me, sir. Let me finish. I want you to get away from me. What's happened? Willie, Burden's defending himself. What? They've adjourned while the little fool consults his solicitor. I'm delighted to hear it. Hello. Hello. Oh, Ricky. Nice of you to pop in. I thought you didn't want to see me again. Well, this is a public court, isn't it? No, I see you've come to see me hanged. Well, it looks like it. You seem determined to throw away your case. Well, it's my case, isn't it? Well, don't be a fool, Frank. Did I hear you call me Frank? You, you, you can't talk to a witness for the prosecution. Are you a witness? Well, yes, I am, but... Oh, I see, so your father's dragged you into it now. Oh, don't say things like that. I can't help it, and I was called by the Crown, and I... No, I understand. You're entitled to say and do exactly what oh, you Mr. like. Burton, I've been looking for you everywhere. Now, do you know what to do? I know what to do, all right. Father, I beg of you, don't go on with this case. Well, of course I shall go on with it. At least I won't. It isn't my case, but the Crown will. The court sends fashion. The law has been set in motion, and the law must operate. I intend to be vindicated. 
Oh, but, Father, you must listen to me. Don't take any notice of her, will you? William Gow. William Gow. No, no. <laughs> oh, Mr. Skirving, can you help me? I must get into the court and they won't let me in because I'm a witness. Oh, I see. Well, I'll just keep him busy and you slink in. Oh, thank you. Oh, and Victoria, listen. Uh, don't think too hardly of Lisbeth. I uh, won't. Donald. Yes, sir. Who are you keeping? Oh, Bonnie, man, Bonnie. Ah, that's <laughs> fine. Tell me, how's that wee daughter of yours getting on with the ballet dancing? Oh, man, she's grand. She's just a... In short, you've the strongest reason to believe that you've been the victim of deliberate and persistent persecution. Absolutely. Thank you. Mr. Burden, do you wish to cross-examine? I'll say I do. <laughs> Silence! Now, Mr. Gow, when did this so-called persecution start? The night you organized a pack of hooligans to break up my meeting. Oh, no, no, before that. What about my article? Wasn't that part of the persecution? Certainly it was. Then I'll ask you again. When did the persecution start? I suppose you want me to say when Mrs. Hegarty came to my house. Exactly. She came to you very distressed. No doubt. But she didn't take her grievance to the proper quarter. Didn't she? Weren't you the provost, the father of his people? Yes, yes. But if I happen to be distressed by a burst pipe, shall we say, I don't take my distress to the prime minister. I get a plumber in a manner of speaking, my lord. Well, in a manner of speaking, sir, Mrs. Hegarty probably thought you were the plumber. Oh. Mr. <laughs> Byrne. Silence! So you were surprised the day after Mrs. Hegarty's visit when your meeting refused to listen to you? Nothing surprises me and Bicky. Oh, then it didn't surprise you they should take a strong line with a canting humbug who... My lord, I object. Mr. Burden, I ought perhaps to warn you that this sort of thing is impressing me very unfavorably. Very unfavorably indeed. Go on. So you vented your annoyance on a poor woman and her dog. You took her barrow. I did nothing of the sort. As for being a poor woman... You took her barrow. Well, she seems to have done very well out of it. Very insolent of her, Mr. Gow. <laughs> Look here, why do you suppose the whole town turned against you all of a sudden? Because you deliberately set yourself to make trouble. What do you suppose our motive was for that? Well, how should I know? Self-advertisement, I should think. I did it because I'm an ordinary sort of man. And when I see a bully and a coward... Behave yourself, Mr. Burden. You're throwing away your case. I'm trying to get at the truth. Why can't he be a man? Why did he go sneaking around persecuting widows and little mongrel dogs? Lord, I do you don't say control yourself. I'll stand up to anyone who hits above the belt. Who hit you below the belt? You did. In what way? You wormed your way into my family circle. Stop that. I won't have your family circle mentioned in this court. You won't have it. If you'd shown a little decent feeling earlier on... Stop, stop. What's all this about Mr. Gow's family circle? Ask him. My lord, the reference must be to Mr. Gow's daughter. She's a witness of the prosecution. Yes, my lord, that's the sort of man he is. Mr. Burden. But it's scandalous. Be quiet, sir. I won't be quiet. I'm calling her next, my lord. No, you're not. Siren. Siren. Come out here, you. Now, who are you and what did you say? I'm Mr. Gow's daughter and I said I wasn't being called as a witness. Why not, pray? Because I can't give evidence. Oh, yes, you can. We'll see about that. Oh, but I can't. And why not? Because the accused and I are husband and wife. <laughs> but is this true? Yes. My lord, I, I, I must ask for an adjournment. But I can't keep on adjourning. Yeah. But my lord, this is a profound shock. Oh, very well. Whist, <laughs> whist, whist. They're married. And? Hey, and a wife can't give evidence against her husband. That's the law. Send Mr. Burton here at once. You can't do that, sir. It's most irregular. Do as I tell you. Oh, Vicky. I tell you what, Willie. Oh, don't start yammering at me. You've done a nice thing. Well, I asked you not to go on with the case. Well, why didn't you tell me? I can't have a son-in-law serving six months. You sent for me?
What do you mean by marrying my daughter? I haven't. What? I only just said that. We haven't seen each other since I left the house. Then why in heaven's name? To stop you. Huh. To save you both from your stupid pride. But do you realize what she's done? They can have her for contempt. For my... It's worse. It's perjury. Yes. Oh. Stop the case. What? Well, I can't stop the case, and I won't stop the case. Willie! You have insufficient evidence. Oh, very well, I'll put you back in the box. Willie! No, you won't. Well, you can't make a fool of the crowd. You can't force me. And you can't bully me. You'll go back in that box. Go along, guy. Very well. Willie! Oh, go to blaze this woman. Horace, he called me a woman. All oh. right, my dear. Now, Mr. Gow. The news you've just heard is, of course, a great shock to you. No. But do you mean to tell the court that you condone this maneuver on the part of the panel? Yes. But Mr. Gow, it was with your consent that this scoundrel... My lord, may I make a statement? My lord, I protest. Go on, Mr. Gow. I want to say that in my considered opinion, Mr. Burden was fully justified in all the actions he took against me. I think Mr. Burden misjudged me, but he misjudged me without malice. Hurrah for the trollers! <laughs> fully realized that a public man is apt to get above himself. I'm grateful to Mr. Burden for bringing me back to earth. In regard to Mrs. Hegarty and her dog Patsy, I forgot to apply one of the great principles of my life. It is this. It is only the realization, the sympathetic realization, the deeply sympathetic realization that each unit in the state is a living, breathing soul. Each with his own aspirations. Each with his own peculiarly intense perception of his own rights and his own wrongs. A leader must have that strange sixth sense that enables him to see into the hearts of his people, to feel in his own flesh and in his own blood, the wounds and distresses they suffer. To a leader, even the least of his children.